It's Easter morning. And it's sunrise. And I wish I could understand why they did what they did, and why they had to feel that way. And I know in a way they've contributed to my dying here. But I can't hate them. I don't hate them. I feel sorry for them. I can't say I actually forgive them for what they've done. I think that's more between them and God. But I don't hate them. I guess what makes me most sad is that they probably feel like they did the right thing. Bubba Land. And it, it's the home of the Bubba, the good old boys. Now, that this is the heart of the KKK. I had met up with some of the good old boys in town. The first time I met the fella was at Walmart. I was sitting outside having my pipe, and he was out smoking his pipe. And we got chatting. And he starts telling me about this group he belongs to. And he just knew that I'd fit right in with the boys, that I'd be a good asset to their organization. It's a shoot off of the KKK. And they're asking me to join their group. <laughs> and I love it, I do. It just kind of shows, you know, that there's, if people give you half a chance, they accept you without realizing. But I can just imagine if I walk into their meeting and introduce myself and tell them what I am, I imagine it'd be quite a scene. cooking up a feast for my brothers, the brothers in my chosen family, that is. You know, Max, Cass, the rest of them. This is nice, thick-cut country bacon, not like you get in the city. You know, this car, I made it in an hour and 15 minutes. You drove too fast. <laughs> Ow! Now it won't. <laughs> yes, it will. I drive with this foot. <laughs> I met Maxwell. He was the first brother I really met. And all the guys I work with at work, you know, they all had to go to this... Um, Eventually, it's kind of almost a father-son relationship. Maxwell has become one of my children. I've taken him as a responsibility of raising. I'm more fun than you are. Maxwell, women want more than fun. It's yeah. because I'm intimate and you're sexual. There you go. Many people have thought Robert and I were a couple. And the funny thing is, Robert and I have not really known each other like all our lives. We've known each other, what, 10 years? 
But it's almost as if I grew up with him. When I first found out I was dying, I knew I had three phone calls I had to make. The hardest one to make was to Maxwell because my sons will have each other. My mom will have my dad. She'll have the rest of my family. But Maxwell's not going to have anyone. I think it's funny when you sent me that email because you couldn't find me when my car broke down. You're grounded, <laughs> making your old man worry. <laughs> That's right. Now, wait a minute. You can't ground me. I don't live under your roof. I don't have to live under your roof. You're still my son. All right, Pops. From the time you get here until the time after you leave, all you do is eat. Hey, I threw your garbage away. Hey, dude. That's the, uh, how you... I hate so. Yeah, he kept tearing and up this road 80 miles an hour. No, I was not doing 80 miles an hour. You know, you can That's tell it's a German car because it has a mind of its own. It did 80 all the way here. 80, 80 horses, right? Yeah. And you didn't have nothing to do with it. <laughs> I didn't have nothing to do with it. Living in there. You do? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. I met Robert, I remember, a few years ago at Southern Comfort. You know, we were kind of friendly, but nothing much, you know. But this last year has been kind of uh, important for me. I've, like, come out in a really big way and have had some major changes, and I'm, like, finding myself and all this and that. and. And Robert and I um, kind of renewed our friendship. One, two, three, four, five, six. Lola is the socialite. Lola is the queen of Soko. She is all of the guys' wet dreams. All of the guys lust after Lola. I'm grandpa to all the guys. I'm dating Lola. I haven't figured that one out yet, and neither has any of the other guys either, how they missed out and I lucked out. I'm not talking about Whoa. future plans. Honey, darling, it's your collection. It is ready. Soup? It's, it's soup. It's something. It's hamburgers, hot dogs, baked beans, potato salad, macaroni salad, coleslaw. This is chili for the hot dogs. It's not that many of us. Are you saying we're all pigs? I'm having a hard time learning to cook for less than 500. All right, let's have some, some grabbing. <laughs> <laughs> no, a little more grabbing. Too... Wait a minute now. You know, there's plenty of you women here. This is... <laughs> Oh, are we going to do it again? Go for for it. We're going to do it for the camera. Yeah, we're going to do it again. Ready? <laughs> <laughs> My best hope is that he totally beats the thing and just continues to live a happy life. He's, you know, he's very uh, happy living up here you know, God, two hours from town um, with the noisy roosters and all. I mean, but everybody's idea of paradise is different, I suppose. Want to try? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Because I'll just take these down. And then uh, we could do everything in the morning so I can... It would be easier if you take yeah. your place because... Oh, we had a friend in Florida. She lived in a tent for what, six years, seven years? She was crazy. To save up money for her surgery. She didn't have any documentation from any doctor. She finally found this quack in Miami that agreed to do the surgery. She got dressed 
took her catheter bag and slung it over the handlebars of her motorcycle and rode from Fort Lauderdale to Miami. She asked about the catheter, and he says, oh, you can take it out next week, and sent her back home. Yep. Well, I think mine, mine was about 4,000. It was outpacing, and the doctor went on vacation the minute he got I know, cut. they really mm -hmm. missed you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they messed they him. Wheeled him out the door in a wheelchair, stuck him in the car, and I had to take him home in that condition. Mm -hmm. And then had no help, nothing. And all these young guys coming up asked, what question should I ask? I said, you better find out when he's taking his vacation. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I saw genetic women who had had breast cancer and had to have radical mastectomies. And I'll tell you what, there's a, some of them, a couple of them there, that I, I would love to have had their chest. I mean, there were no scars. It looked really nice. Now, if they can do that, doing a radical yeah, mistake, than, then they can do better than what we're getting. That's right. I've always believed that. I've always yeah. believed always. that, too. I've always believed that, and I've always believed that if they really wanted to, they could make a better phalloplasty. Mm -hmm. I truly believe it's the mentality. We mm -hmm. cannot create men from second-class citizens, and they don't refuse. They don't refuse to. to make us look complete. Mm -hmm. And no matter what you say, any fellow plastic today, you drop your drawers, people are going to know it ain't real. Mm -hmm. That it's not man, it's not God, God made, it's man made. Mm -hmm. And I think they do it on purpose. Everybody wants a toxic waste dump to get to the toxic Cass waste. and I and Robert would come up to Atlanta from AMA. Florida to go to the convention in Southern Comfort. Okay. Yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Southern Comfort's what's kept me alive this year. I kept praising God, yeah, yeah, just let me make it to this one more SoCo and be able to see my chosen family. Get the chickens. <laughs> Get the chicken. Okay, fine. Skeeter has a, a white cat, I mean, like and every once in a while he dyes it with Kool-Aid. Seymour! Mm. They call him Daddy Robert because he takes care of everybody. Do you have an egg salad tomorrow? <laughs> we only saw each other at Southern Comfort. But now that he's been up here, we've been trying to spend you know, every other weekend or as often as we can, we get together. Part of that's, I guess, that we know time's running out, so we spend as much time as we can. A year ago last January, I woke up very, very ill. I was staying with some friends of mine. They forced me to go to the hospital. I have terminal cancer. I have cancer of the cervix and the ovaries of the uterus. When I first started through this, I wanted to have a hysterectomy and stuff done, and I was told, no, don't worry about it. At your age, since you're already going through menopause, no problem. And it's kind of a cruel joke. That last only part of me that was really female is killing me. It took three weeks of calling doctor after doctor after doctor. I kept getting turned down by doctors. They would not treat me. What OB gynecologist doesn't know how to treat female organs? Mm -hmm. That is a lame excuse. There, there was two or three of the doctors that were at least honest enough to just say point blank, I'm sorry, but it would be too much of an embarrassment to my other patients hey, to have you in here. They were afraid of losing business. Mm -hmm. No, I wouldn't have. I, You'd have I bled to death in our house, in our home, and that wasn't going to happen. You were ready Finally, one Sunday morning, I woke up in a pool of blood, so I told my friends, Tom and Debbie. I was staying with them at the time. Being knocked down by jerks like One hospital that was down in another town that was real close told him he didn't have insurance, told him not to worry about it, we would pay the bill, told him what was going on and that he'd been seen at the other hospital. And we have no problem with that. And I said, well, here's the next thing. He's a transsexual. Well, maybe you better go to downtown. Downtown. Hung up from there, called another one. I think by the time that day was over, we had over 20 doctors, and I don't know how many hospitals that refused to treat him. He has spent, he spent the last 10 years 
preaching to me, telling me that I have faith. I just don't admit it, and I don't want to admit it, and I don't want to believe in it. And, um, but I have a really hard time believing that any deity and so-called God would be so cruel. You do. If you believe, it works. You just gotta believe. That's it. That's it. That's, That's the problem. problem. I don't believe. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Since our relationship first began, we both said, then, you know, but neither one of us want a serious relationship, you know, just someone to go out with, go to a movie. Well, that didn't last a whole lot of time. Lola and I are falling in love. And she told me, she says, but I gotta be honest, there's one little place in my heart I'm holding back. And I told her, that's all right, I prefer it that way. Now's no time for a full-blown romance. Oh, gag a <laughs> faggot ten times over. Petticoats and the whole work. Easter. Oh, that hat. Oh, my Easter. God. Easter. I made it almost to the foot of the hill before I fell. You were just resplendent. <laughs> oh, God, and what a sour face. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll keep my comments to myself. That's all right. You're allowed. Oh, well, that's, that's the one up in the holler. What are you carrying? A checkerboard. White, I, I had white traded gloves. Oh yes, it was Easter time, I believe. I was always big on checkers. I was a champion checker player. Oh God, I hate that picture. I hated that dress. I'd much rather have had my ball cap <laughs> or my cowboy hat. Yeah. It's not a smile, it's a snarl, like, yeah, thanks a lot. It's like, oh, let's get a picture of you with the baby doll. Uh -huh. And then immediately I traded Frank for it. <laughs> What'd you get off of Frank? A bow and arrow set. <laughs> There's Ziggy's bike and my chemistry set. See the box there? That's my bow and arrow set. Mm -hmm. That was my, my good bow and arrow set. That's not me, that's my evil twin sister. It's this poor little boy being stuffed that's in drag. That's it, it's a poor little boy being stuffed in drag. That made my mother happy. Yeah. I mean. that, that's, that's my cross-dressing days. <laughs> the main thing I did was accept myself. And then I started on testosterone. My arms and hands got bigger. That's the hardest part, the bones growing, it hurts. I had top surgery. I had a form of mastectomy done. I had the breast removed. And that's all I had to do. Some of the guys, you know, especially the younger guys just coming out, they think they've got to have that bottom surgery. If, if they don't have that piece of flesh swinging between their legs, they're not a man. Being a man or being a woman has nothing to do with your genitalia. 
It has to do with what's right here in your heart and what's in your mind. I told him I don't know until we look at it. Your best case is if it's easily gotten to and just needs to be brushed, you know, it might be about 20 bucks. But if we have to pull it and, and recover refrigerant and carry it to the backyard, it could be like some major money. It's a little strange, you know, at this point, okay, well, so that's I still is. work as John. It's still easier for me to function business-wise that way. And I can't believe that you let that lady, you know, keep you captive while she she put her filter through the dishwasher. In some ways, you know, John is very much me, yeah. but in a lot of ways, he's like a construct, you know. He's, I sort of built him. I don't know. I don't know who John is. Yeah, I've, I've never, I've met John once, long, long time ago, back about... Mm, about seven or eight years ago, I guess. And I found him a very sad, very depressed man. He was very unhappy. I was afraid that if I allowed Lola any real space in my life or accepted that part of my nature that I would become a social leper you know, unlovable, unwanted, scorned, shunned, and abused. <laughs> you best die. My gentleman lighter. I was going to do it myself. You know, I know, but you just couldn't thing. get it up there. He's so funny. It's like he could be, his legs would be all given out on him, and, you know, he's using the walker, and he'll insist on, on taking the trouble to open my door for me. That's cute. You can't, we promised we wouldn't use that word no more. We did. I don't recall any such We had facts. a long discussion the other night about that. <laughs> you did, didn't you? No. <laughs> <laughs> Watch your blush. I love it. <laughs> she is, without a doubt, the most wonderful woman in the world. Oh, God. Present company included. <laughs> Lola needs to see the Lola that I see. Cass, she won't be kissing on you. <laughs> Just so that you know, during the haircut, you don't get no kisses. Let's see if we got any wild ones here. Hmm? I said, let's see if we got any wild ones here. Corey is Maxwell's girlfriend. That's, that's his latest conquest. Robert and I have always been rather critical of, of whoever we're having relationships with in our life. And I like Lola. You know, I, I really do. I like Lola, and I think she's been good for him. And then I sit back and I go, well, where does that come from, that I've got that little kind of dig against her? And I truly believe it's just because we're very, very protective of each other, and I don't think that... I don't think anyone's good enough for him. And vice versa. I think he's always felt no one's been good enough for me. But yet we want each other to be happy and to find the love of our lives. So go figure, what are we supposed to do? You know? She thinks she's human. She likes you. She yeah, doesn't she take does. the people real well. Yes, yeah, she does. He's a real sweet dog. I'd always lived my life as a gay man. I totally identified as a gay man before. I had never even seen a vagina up close in person. I was like a little schoolgirl because I was pointing and looking at it. I said, well, what's oh, this? Was you know, so was, funny. I knew more about it than he did in some way. <laughs> I was telling you well, what the different parts were. And you well, said, oh, I, you know, are. I'm not good at biology. <laughs> you know, they're there, okay? I don't name them. I don't know what they are, so... <laughs> Cass is an introvert. He's more isolated than what I am here. You know, he's married to a genetic woman. People assume since she was married to a transsexual, that meant that she had to be a lesbian. 
And there's not a lesbian bone in her body. Where's your little black uh, tool thing? I think it's in the front room. I think she wants me to put up a birdhouse. Okay. There. Get the birdhouse. Okay. He's never been anything other than, than male to me. I look at him and that's what I see. <laughs> what a smart idea. <laughs> Well, that's me. <laughs> I've got the old Southern upbringing that you know, I didn't speak to a black person until I was 26 years old because it was a no-no. <laughs> but he changed all that. He's made me feel that you, you should not hold against a person anything about them. How many times have you been married? <laughs> no, we're not telling that one. <laughs> Always made awful choices, horrible, awful choices. I've been beaten, brutalized, raped, maimed. <laughs> oh God, everything. I made horrible choices. Swore I'd never marry again. Wasn't going to. <laughs> Walked into my life. But... He was already living in the trailer park when I moved in, and I just like very afraid. My son comes in one day and he says, Mom, I've got to know this, this person next door. And, and uh, he knew the, the female part and he kept saying, you know, she, she's really cool. You know, actually she's a man trapped in a female body. And I'm like, well, how do you know that? Well, it's got something to do with the muscles in your arm or, or something like that. <laughs> I was so confused and even more afraid then. <laughs> and I said, well, don't you bring that person over here. Don't you bring them in my house. And I saw him when he was coming that way, and I got the gun. <laughs> and had it under and the cushion. I stuck it under the cushion. I was like, oh, he's not going to jump on me because I know that's what's going to happen. He's going to come over here and jump on me and, and, and rape me or something. <laughs> and we sat and talked all night long and became the best friends. Tomorrow afternoon, my oldest son will be here. I haven't seen him for just about a year. And then on Saturday, my mother and father and my gorgeous grandson will be here. He's three years old and he is the light of my life. To him, I'm not one thing that I used to be and one thing I am now. I am always have been and always will be his papa, pure and simple. And that, that's, I just am. You got your luggage packed? Okay, you be real good so you can come to the farm. I love you too, buddy. You my tater. That's right, you my sweetie tater pie. I don't think there's anything better to leave your children than, than land that's home. I intend to die right here in this trailer. I'm to be cremated and my ashes spread on the land here. And then this land will pass on to my children and hopefully from them to their children.
from the time I was a small kid, I knew that God intended for me to be a parent. So I found a suitable man that I could deal with, and I married him, and I have two wonderful sons. Wipe one more of your beers. Yeah, we'll let it soak like that for an hour and then turn it. I was hesitant to make this trip. I was because I had heard how mom's condition was. And a big part of me didn't want to remember my mom that way because the last time I saw mom she was still he was still in control of themselves of herself what western hickory cooking chop that's it When I was pregnant, oh, God. It was marvelous in you know, feeling this new life growing inside me, but it made it even more evident what a betrayal my own body was to me. I'm not sorry for it, but it was a very hard time. The only time in my life I have ever felt like a homosexual is when I was married to their biological father. Because I am now and always have been a heterosexual male. I like women, I always have. I've never felt like a lesbian. I was just a man that loved women. And to have to be a man and be pregnant, I mean, that's just, <laughs> I can't explain to you exactly how, how bad it was. It, it was. it was the worst and the best at the same time. Okay, take these up there and that metal bucket sitting up there. Mm -hmm. put, put the wood chucks in it and just cover them with water. Just as enough to cover them with water. My mother's my mother, always will be. You know, the advice my friends gave me, well, just tell everybody your mother's dead. And this is your mother's, well, it's your stepfather. And, but I never really considered that. <laughs> Look at that stuff. Ah, that is so good. Mm, even raw, that's good. Mercy. Such flavor. Such texture. My God, I think I might like this. I mean, is that not the most beautiful piece of meat you've ever seen in your life? Next to you? Ooh, right. ain't that so. <laughs> the cut's gonna lose more heat. That's well, see, I go on the input cut into the meat there. Yeah. That's pretty, that's pretty good, that's pretty good. Being true to myself is everything that mom taught me. Covered and your mama and papa, I mean, I need to go do some taters and onions. Stuff. That'd be nice. I mean, we're not huh? strictly carnivores, are we? No, we're not strictly carnivores. <laughs> Had I gotten married, I would have chosen mom to be the best man at my wedding. <laughs> For 20 years, I hid in the gay community. The only place I was going to be able to be with a woman, considering the way my body looked, was in the gay community. My mom accepted that. It was 
kind of like the military policy. Don't talk about it. Just do it. My first lover and I were together over 10 years. We lived in the house beside my mom and dad. We got along fine. When I finally told her the truth that, Mom, I'm not gay. I'm a transsexual. There were tears. There was the usual, where did I go wrong? What did I do to make you this way? After a couple of months, I finally convinced her it wasn't her fault. It was my dad's, and that calmed her down for a while. And then when I had my surgery, the only thing she said was, why couldn't you have just stayed gay? And then we didn't talk much of all for five years. Okay. But we found the tail. He found the jug, and I found the tail. Okay. Was in the refrigerator? The tail was in the refrigerator? Yeah. I don't think so. It was. I saw it in there. I don't think so. Oh, yeah, I like it to get in the bottle. Here it goes. You're not supposed to drink out of the bottle. Here it goes. You ready? There it goes. Say go. Go. Ah. When Robert's in my home, I introduce him as my nephew. See, not because of the fact that I'm ashamed of him or anything like that, but I don't want my uh, neighbors uh, realizing that there is something different. And that's the reason that I don't want my picture taken or my name given. They ask where our daughter Barbara is. I said, well, Barbara and I have had a little difference of opinion, and we don't see much of her anymore. And she doesn't detain It's a definite no-no. Yeah, she just washes it and You're dries the good it. monster, OK? I'm the good monster. Who's the bad monster? Um, her. How about him? No, he's the good monster. What how about good monster? Doing? How about the other papa? You're the mean pop. You're the mean monster. Yeah, I know. You'd always make me the mean one. No, oh. I'm the I'm the mean one. Yeah, you're the mean one. Boy, I'm and the good am one I mean? Yeah. yeah. Come on, good mean monsters Higgin, down there. When I tell you, see my finger, see my thumb, see my fist, you better run, buddy. You better get going. Because I don't know the difference between my finger and my thumb, and I wouldn't Keegan. know the difference between... Huh? Tell her. Yeah. You've always been Papa's boy, haven't you? I've got your new address in my list there somewhere. I had dreams that my daughter would grow up to marry a man that would become president of the United States or he'd be king of some country. I knew that my daughter was that kind of a woman. And those dreams, as you well know, were shattered. But I will say this, I am very proud because I know that in him today beats the heart of my daughter, Barbara. You be good boy, help Papa drive good. Okay. But it comes down to a choice where either you're going to spend your life being miserable 
to make somebody else happy or you're going to spend your life somewhat happy but having to live with the knowledge that you made people you love miserable. It's a catch-22. It's a no-wind. We lose a lot of friends. We lose a lot of things. We lose jobs. We lose friends. We lose family. But the hardest of all was family. Because family is the core. Family is is the stone. It, it's It's what holds everything together. And all of a sudden, it's gone. It, it's like, it's like standing out, you're out in the middle of the ocean on an iceberg, and it all of a sudden melts. Dorothy, I'm writing this letter in regards to your youngest child, whom you originally named Peggy Sue. I know her as Maxwell. I realize that for a long time you have been estranged from one another. I've been told that you do not take her changing her gender very well. Obviously, it was very difficult for you because you have not spoken to her in close to 10 years. I can assure you that your child is not a freak. Please just pick up the phone and call your child. Just say hello. Just tell Maxwell that you love him, even if you don't understand him. He is still your child. Max on this. I'm going to keep that forever. I'm used to being the one that's different. And she's not necessarily used to being different. He's so jealous. He doesn't want anybody else to love anybody. She's afraid she might lose her job if they find out. She's afraid of this film. I'm just afraid of, of someone coming in here and destroying everything we have and harming us because they think it's the right thing to do in the name of God. In the name of God, for heaven's sake. And as the morning sun break, I saw you in a different light. I want you and I know that you want me to. I can see in your eyes that you burn with desire. And I know this ain't right, but I can't turn half a light. It's getting close. It's getting close. I feel it. There's some nights I go to bed and I'll wake up at two or three in the morning and I'll have the abominable sweats. Yeah, you know, they've they've raised my morphine again. I bump into doorways. I, I walk into walls. And hospice finally said, "I'm sorry, but you cannot stay here by yourself. You've got to have." somebody with you 24 hours. Lola, she says, you're coming to live with me. They, yeah, they did bring the other bottle of Marinol, didn't Yeah, this is it. It's a dinky little bottle. I know. So you do. Okay, so there's... What kind of coffee are we drinking this morning? It's almond amaretto. You're making a face. 
you want me to make you some? Um... No, it's just the last few mornings I've had regular coffee. I know. So I wasn't ready for the flavor this morning. You hate it, don't you? Uh -uh. You want the um, espresso? No, this is good. Okay. I should get you that terminal too. This is a whole new role for Lola. Lola's always had the reputation around the community of being kind of the Betty Boop. You know, she's played games with people and let them think that she's not quite as smart as she is, kind of hiding herself. And now she's coming out full bloom and she is something else when she's just coming right out. Oh, please stop it. What? Just telling her how wonderful you are, and how beautiful, and how organized, and... I, sh I didn't, you know, I really should put all of this on tape, you know, for when I'm not feeling so great. Sweetheart, it is on tape. <laughs> <laughs> but just in the last couple of months now, it's come on real strong, but she just really blushes. I can get her to blush all the way from head to toe. See? And she can't deal with it because she's never blushed like that before. <laughs> all my life I've been looking for the perfect woman. And all this time she's been right there in front of me and I didn't even realize it. Because I never thought I had a chance with her. Just... Why? You're like completely lovable. <laughs> To be loved by you, that, that's... I had no notion, Robert. I thought that we would have this little flame. That's, that's what I forget. We have this night, we have this nice friendship. We'd, you know, go out, we'd have fun together, you know, no entanglements and mm -hmm. stuff, and then, bam, we just... Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, next thing I know, we're in love with each other, and we can't stop it. And it's beautiful. Hand me that cotton ball, hurry. See, mine come dry out. <clears throat> I better put the cotton ball up, the medication comes back out. Is yours as thick as mine? Yep, it's pretty thick. Yeah, I know testosterone is like really thick. This one makes you horny. <laughs> this one makes you irritable. Definitely a difference <laughs> in needle. Damn. See, you use a different kind. Needle wise? You use the 23 gauge, but yours is really long. Yes, it's really long. Because it has to go in the muscle, right? And yours. Mine just goes in the fat. Yeah. <laughs> you have to push yours in. <laughs> Sex is different now. It's more of a, an experience. It was before, as a male, it was more, really more, it was more about the orgasm. Yep. And now it's more about the whole experience. I enjoy the actual experience more than just the... Orgasm. We go past the body part in her chest. If I move in a certain way, then she can feel that mm -hmm. energy of me penetrating her, mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter that, that there's no hole there to penetrate. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's definitely the mind thing. If I, if I slide down the bed and, and I kiss her in certain spots, she can feel me, you know, she can feel that, that female part mm -hmm. of her being touched by me and, and I can feel it too and it doesn't matter that it really isn't there to exist. So if any 550 pound hippo with a razor strap and a six inch razor heads into my room, you stop her real cold and told her no, he's not to be touched, he's to be burned natural. I said it hadn't been five years. She said, well, anyway, she brought to sleep as far as possible. Well, I said, that's not what I was told. She says, well, I'm sorry, yeah, what was his mess name? And I called him. I already gave you permission. Shut up. I'm having a serious moment. Damn it. Well, come on then. You know, just falling asleep in the zone, don't you dare. <laughs>
Robert wanted to get some of the things packed up, and we wanted to um, pick up his uh, tuxedo for, for Soko to see if we can get it altered if we can by then, and to get his speech out of the get his speech out of the computer. Uh, nobody knows where he filed it, but we're going to try to find it. We're trying to see if we can find it. Do you have down the paper for me? It and, sounds beautiful. And basically, just to, to pack some things up, so we come up for a couple of days. Well, we need to we need to get into uh, see if we can find your speech where it's at. Do you have a Soko subdirectory? Yeah, it's on three and eleven. Huh? Three and eleven. Ah, here's the one that says speech. What's this here for? Labels. Here we go. We got it, Robert. Yeah. Okay. You have a blank disc. It's going to be almost like a miracle if he does, and if he can give that speech, but with Robert, he just may wind up doing it. I've got a seminar at 7 on uh, trans to trans intimacy. And then I've got the speech for luncheon from 7 to 1.30. And then I come back. <clears throat> English. Didn't have no mushroom and onions on them. How, how ignorant. That's why they teach you to make them and then they don't make them that way. I mean, that's ignorant. <laughs> so many kids out here running around that BB rifle. What? I saw them kids out here running around that BB rifle. I didn't see them. Please help me, I'm falling. The convention is like only four days away. Are we ready? <laughs> no. <laughs> I talked to Robert the other day and said that just in case he's not up to it or if he's not feeling well or even if he is there, just in case he can't handle like all the talking and stuff, I figured that Corey and I could sit on the panel with him just so that there'd be a, another couple there. Take some pressure off of Robert. Mm. So, and he said he was fine with it. I, I, I gotta tell you, you know, I'm really worried about Robert. He's got, you know, good days and bad days, but I don't think he's gonna be up for this convention. I just don't see it happening. This was Easter, and look at how skinny he was. He's even skinnier now. Cast saw him. And I asked how he was, and he came back and said that he was skinnier. And I, I don't see how I could be skinnier. But yeah, I guess he is. Robert eats and Lola Cola. Yep. Or nine o'clock in the morning. We'll see. He might fool us all. On real cuss. What you need, Robert? I got lost again. I don't know which way I'm going. Okay. Here, taxi, taxi, taxi. I want to try my tux pants on to see how badly they fit. be in a terrible situation if my tux pants don't fit. I might need that for my speech. My you cigarettes are in my other jacket. I'll get your jacket when you come out and sit down. This is my coffee, right? Yes. Okay. I don't see that we need to get that altered. Yeah. I was hoping not. I think you're fine. You look good. Yeah, go call Lola and tell her that the crisis is over, that the tux fix. Yeah, make sure, make sure, have her run out and make sure my boots are up there. These are my old boots, and I don't want to wear my old boots with my good touches. 
the main feeling that I can say that Soko is is simply love. It's, it's the cotillion of the trans community. It's the coming out party. Yeah, I'm gonna wear it over town. See how many people mm. follow the funeral. Here, Lola wants to see him. Hold on. See, do not look gorgeous. <laughs> I tell you now. <laughs> Yeah, and you know, use the chair if your you know, hips and legs are bothering you. I will. I will because it's... So have you given any oh, thought oh, to that? Oh, 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 Maxwell called me, and he has decided that he and Corey are going to sit in on the panel with you and I on intimacy. Well, you know what? Either they can do it or we can do it. You know, as well, he, far as I'm concerned, he, he says that you know, they, they don't plan to say much, just to add a couple of extras to the panel. Why don't they just add from like out in the yeah, in the me, crowd, uh, like yeah. everybody else? Yeah, I think I'd rather do that because Maxwell doesn't know anything about intimacy. All Maxwell knows is sex, and all this Corey knows is sex. Seminar. Hey, bro, Lola and I talked it over, and we already have things pretty well planned out. How are we going to do things? Thanks for the offer to help out, though, but I think we've got it covered. Lola's strength comes from Robert, and if Robert's fading, Lola's useless. So I wrote him back, and I said, Hey, Robert, I am sure that you and Lola can handle things, but better safe than sorry, and we want to cover some things that I am sure you and her won't. So the four of us can do it together. So that's, that's what I wrote to him. I haven't heard back from him, so. And I know Robert, he's stubborn, he's got his mindset, he's probably thinking I'm trying to take it over. I believe, quite honestly, it's, it's a matter of jealousy. Maxwell, you know, I've, I've had him under my wing for over 10 years, and I love him. But there's times I just like to pick him up by the shirt collars and shake some sense into him. Max will not face this rationally. Yeah, I guess because they've been friends for so long. And, uh, they're losing each other. It's because you've been rejected by the world, by your biological family, by your friends. You come into the community, here's these people that understand me. And all of a sudden, maybe they don't totally understand you. And it's a big disappointment it's like, damn, they don't understand either. Hey, bro. Hey. Hey, how you feeling? Tired. Tired? Yeah. Corey is more sexually involved, more physically involved than she is actually uh, intimately. Mm, I don't know if I agree with that. I think we're definitely, we've definitely got a lot of intimacy between us. You just haven't really seen us together. Well, fucking in the back of the pickup truck in the parking lot isn't a lot of the well, intimacy. I mean, a, that's 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 a whole nother side of it, Robert. You, yeah. you seem to well, think I have. I, no, you seem to I mean. think I have no sense of intimacy, Robert. You don't. Is <laughs> is not it. is not our relationship intimate? 
think about that? Yes, we have an intimate relationship, but it is a male-male intimacy. It's not a female-male intimacy. It's not a trans-the trans intimacy. Yeah. You don't know Corey very well. She's actually quite articulate. I'm afraid the most articulate things I've heard out of her mouth had nothing to do with intimacy. I've always been critical of the ones you date. You've always been critical of the ones I date. We have always done that. Maybe we critical? set really high why, standards. Why, why are you critical? Are you criti critical of Lola? Of course I am. You know that. I've told you that. I've why? talked to you about Lola. Why are you critical of her? Of Lola? Mm-hmm. Well, you know that I, you know how I felt about that whole ditzy kind of thing, and that, no, whole, that was all. I don't want. It doesn't matter. That's all we knew of Lola for the last four years. That's all we knew of her. Mm -hmm. That's all I've ever seen. She's something different now, don't you? She's definitely gained the confidence and her strength. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah, she gets she, it from she's you. She's gained her confidence big time. She gets it from you. No, she gets it from herself. She gets it from herself. She just needed someone to show her the way. Well, oh, that's, okay. That's, <laughs> it's sickening how domesticated and housefrau-like I've become <laughs> since he's been here. Honey, can I get you something? You know. Really? She has become so domesticated. I'm washing his clothes well, and well, really, yeah, she I'll even folded my clothes and she folded my clothes and put them away. Lola, may I please have a dance? With you? Talk to the boss. <laughs> <laughs> may I dance with your girl? It depends. One dance. It depends. Yeah, it depends. My ass. You're working. That's around. exactly it. You're, you're <laughs> Yeah, we might be worse than the women. I think so. I think there's two of us. Bell hops. Look at this. They're gonna shit. I mean, there's a whole two of us, of and this truck is packed. Is that all of it? That's all of it. Our life seems to revolve around the next event. All our energy, all our extra cash. For the last month, everything goes to Soko. What room are we in, honey? I'm 446. Well, the parlor is 446. The bedroom's not quite ready yet. Yeah. Hi. Hi, how you doing? Enter. This is home for the next few days. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so very much. We've got all of the hotel next door. We've got most of this hotel. So, you know, the, everybody else is outnumbered for a change instead of us being outnumbered. Unfortunately, this is a men's world, and as transgender people, we're way down at the bottom of, of the food chain. You know, we're lower than plankton, man. I mean, we, that's how low we are. And now we can't afford the surgery. Women can have surgery for $12,000, $8,000. It costs us anywhere between thirty and $100,000. Who can afford that? We don't make that kind of money before transition. We were waitresses and, and clerks yeah, I mean, and secretaries and, before we transitioned. So what, so what are we now? Now we're waiters and, and we're still clerks. Well, it's true. I think I just figured out something I couldn't figure out. Before, I think I just and do you want to? Do you want to share? I can't understand why Max and I can walk into the same room, and everybody's inviting him to join and putting him on the board immediately. We walk into the room the same time, shoulder to shoulder, and maybe it's because they don't know I'm trans. Maybe, but everybody around here does, you know. I mean, you know, um, most most. Other people on the board and, you know, staff and, yeah, right? You know? Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, you know, like I wouldn't have known you were trans had you not been at Southern Comfort and somebody told me you were trans or, you know, heard some of your story and, and that kind of thing. You guys are flawless, you know, so you got it so much over us. You know. I don't know. Don't you are like one of the most regular guys. You know? <laughs> But you know what, it's, it's like, it's, um, Max asserts himself. And this is about two and a half years post-op. Best doctor can have a bad day. The worst doctor can do a great job. Be prepared for whatever happens. I don't remember so much pain here. It was the arm. See, it was like pinching in around the, the, sl the sleep. And uh, so right here where that, binder went, I have caved in. And when they gave me a hysterectomy, they took that bandage off so that air can get to it. That's how you heal. It couldn't heal, it couldn't get air. And he took a pair of scissors and he cut out the dead and he left a gaping hole. This right here was a gaping hole. You could look and see the muscle. Like you were looking at a side of beef or something. Do you know where any of the rooms are? No, I don't. Good, I don't either. We're in Buckhead One. Okay, and we are off. <laughs> and what did we do the morning that they had their intimacy panel? We laid in bed. It was his seminar. What time is it? Um, 10 20, 10 26. Mm -hmm. I better get up. Okay. <laughs> you know, sex is a, is a beautiful thing, but it's very short lived. I mean, you know, if you're lucky, you got 15 minutes and that's it. With intimacy, you have hours, you have days, you have weeks. You said that trust was a, a big part of it. Mm -hmm. do, does the fact that you're both trans help that trust? I can't honestly say that it helped, but I can't say it hurt either. It just was one little speed bump we didn't have to worry about. It doesn't hurt it. It doesn't hurt I it. Think, I think, yeah, that in our case it's essential, you know, because um, because we understand what it's about, and so it's not an issue, mm -hmm. really. You know, whereas I've dated guys who, you know, I'm like, I'm like not someone but something. People tend to put down individuals who are attracted to transsexuals as a pure fetishistic attraction. I don't believe that's true. I believe it's a legitimate sexual minority. One of my neighbors is one of the biggest fundamentalist religious types you'd ever want to meet. When I told them, they asked their 20 questions mm -hmm. and the five that everybody knows they ask. <laughs> then, uh, those are the sex questions. And then uh, they felt comfortable. Before us, there, there were the blacks, then there were the gays exactly. and the lesbians, and now, now it's our turn. It's our turn to stand up and say, hey, I have the same dignities, I have the same indignities that you have. I deserve to be treated like anybody else. Do you all do corsages? Yes, they make corsages. Oh, okay, I need to talk to someone about getting a corsage made. Okay. Her dress is kind of a shadows of grays and blues and blues and blacks. I mean, it'll make a big, what they'll probably do is do something like this and bring them down, uh -huh. and then they'll be down like this. this okay. Like, or do it like this for the wrist corsage, uh -huh. you know, and add some greenery in there. For the prom that never happened. Well, what a wonderful thing. Yeah. My girlfriend never got to go to her high school prom, so tonight they one of the conventions is having a high school prom for those that didn't get to go, so I'm taking her to it. Yeah. Well, we'll try to make it real special. All right, I appreciate okay. it. Right. Is 
Is my hair back? How was it here? Oh, no. My salad, it was totally. Something's growing anyway. <laughs> so you're just gonna wing it too, right? I've always believed life is short, and I've always lived the fullest I can in every day. And Roberts showed me in a lot of ways how to make every day count. I love this man more than anyone will ever know. Ladies and gentlemen. Robert Eads. <laughs> I'll let you on a little secret. Actually, his name is Leprechaun. <laughs> <laughs> I made a bargain a year, over a year ago with God. I have terminal cancer. I was supposed to have been gone months ago, but I made a bargain with him. Just let me make it to one more Southern comfort. Let me look out and see the love that surrounds everyone in this building today. This is the way it's supposed to be all the time. No prejudice, no hate, and the love that I have gotten from you all the last seven years. It's it. There's no words to compare with it. And I just hope and pray that that love keeps continuing on. And I know as long as all of you come here, as long as all of you hold your hand out to the one next year that's scared to come out of their room, as long as you, my chosen family, take the time, and take the love, and you bring it to each other here, then you can believe there's gonna be one spirit smiling down on this conference every year and loving every one of you. <laughs> I can get it up on, but I can't get it zipped. Which one should I wear, Max? This one or this one? Which one? I can't breathe, but I look beautiful. You need some help putting that on, honey. My fingers aren't working. Tonight. Your fingers aren't working tonight. I think my fingers are working. I've got it in. But you know what? It's, it seems like it it's kind of snapped. Thank you. You're welcome. God, I'm not sure. It's heavy. It is, isn't it? I wasn't expecting that heavy. They should be growing out this way, as opposed to the other way. Don't ask me. <laughs> well, Mother never told me, you know. She never told me neither. And I've never had one this nice. I've had little, you know, little tiny ones. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Becky. That's so sweet. sweet. Yeah, what time is it? The very thought of you Makes my heart sing Like an April breeze On the wings of spring Then you appear in all your splendor My one and only love. The bones are full of cancer. The lymph nodes are full of cancer. The only part of my body that's not full of cancer is my lungs. And I've been smoking since I was like five years old, and I'm not going to quit smoking. If I do, my lungs are going to fill up with cancer. As long as I keep them full of smoke, there's no room for the cancer. <laughs> Right? Of course. <laughs> Thank you. I just don't know. <laughs> well, go ahead and rebuild your face, honey, if you think you well, have. I'm not sure what to do, like whether to take it all off and start over or what. I think you look just fine, sweetheart. 
Yeah, well, you know what? If I was wearing a burlap bag, you know, and swim fins, you'd tell me I was the most gorgeous thing on earth. <laughs> Last night was so, so very sweet. <sighs> and for the first time in, in some time, we got back to that space that, you know, that we shared, where there is no cancer, there is no, you know, medication to worry about. Um, it was just us, you know, just connected so thoroughly. It was, it was beautiful. It was like a gift. And the main thing, yeah, she tells me. Don't, don't, don't hold on for me. And yet I can't help but hold on for her. my grandson grow up. I'd like to live long enough to walk Lola down the aisle and make her my wife. I'd like to, I'd like to do a lot of things. I'd like to see my farm grow. But Sometimes what you want and what you get aren't the same thing. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Here's another one. This one's good. You like that one? Yeah. Mom and Dad? That's the last one. Does that one work? Yeah, I guess. Okay. Now then, we still have the wrapping paper to learn. Wrapping paper, okay. Remember that was Christmassy in there for you? Nope, didn't see no Christmassy. All right, thank you. Your bird pressure is within normal limits. Oops, 98.3. Call me if you need anything. Okay. Would you all like to see the inside of the place? Um, I'm not sure. There's at least six here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, six. No, I didn't. Robert's very favorite space is the patio where he smokes like a fiend. <laughs> I got a tumor in me the size of a softball. Oh, I'm sorry, we're not taking any new patients right now. I'm sorry, but it would be an embarrassment to my other patients to have you here in the office. To them, I'm, I'm expendable. I was talking to my sister, and she asked me who Robert was, and said he's a friend of mine. He's dying of cancer. He couldn't get any medical help that he had went through all these doctors, and she said, why? And I said, Wendy, he's like me. She says, that pisses me off. She says, if some doctor doesn't treat you and you die, 
I'm going to be mad. I'll be standing up fighting, and I'm thinking, this really hurt my feelings. Because you know what? After I'm dead, it's too damn late. Also, Dave Matthews Band, and we'll do some Fake Hill 2 right here on Star 94. And Lemon Ball does not have some best opportunity. Right here, the latest innovations in Columbia. Yeah. Christmas present now. No! This is Jim Gross, president of Southern Lake and Western. We must reduce this excess inventory. I had only been transitioning about a year and a half, and Robert started transitioning when we got together. So, in a sense, we did kind of grow up together and we went through that whole teenage years. We've been through, we've both been through marriages and divorces. We've been through some miscellaneous relationships. You think I'm shy. Robert is extremely shy. He was so shy, it took him a month before he would ask Lola out on a date. And the only reason he did is because I kept prompting him. And then finally, I talked to Lola and said, Robert's interested and wants to take you out on a date, but he's too chicken to ask you. Their whole relationship has my print on it, man. Which I'm kind of proud of. I love you, Mr. Max. Here. How you been doing, Corey? Okay, how are you? All right. I take, took my shower. Yeah, I like your hat there. A little bit of wrong collar, but. It's the closest thing we could find. It's, close, it's closest for, it a, a, for, a, for a leprechaun. <laughs> yeah. It's a little bit of wrong collar. There she is. Hi, y'all. Hi, Lola. How are you doing? Looks like you and me. <laughs> Isn't it though? How are you? I'm fine. How's your life treating you? Uh, it's doing okay. How yeah. about yours? Mm, you know, pretty good. Yeah, I know. In the main. I know. Robert, that's safe. I got a promotion at work. Did? Manager's leaving. I get to become manager of the store. I'm the new man. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Passages marked and all. Do you even have to carry a Bible, huh? I even have a Bible. Oh, oh my God. God. Oh my God. Cass, before it snows, you terribly bad, we're going to go up to Littleton's Lake and go fishing. So we can drive down to Littleton's and do some fishing and enjoy ourselves and go back to the trailer and get warm. Look at some old Southern Comfort pictures. As the end drew near, I noticed a change in his breathing. And so I gathered him in my arms and I told him how very much I loved him. And he left. As per his request, we planted a Christmas tree 
on his land and spread his ashes underneath it. What a curious thing to be so uptight about. Nature delights in diversity. Why don't human beings? I grew up a small town girl in a small town family And I learned how to play by all the rules But as I grew I always knew that there would come a day That this small town girl would go a different way Mama taught me everything a small town girl When the people I used to know found out what I had been doing, how I had been living, they asked me why. But there's no use in talking to people who have a home. They have no idea what it's like to seek safety in other people. For home to be wherever you lie your head. I was always an unusual girl. My mother told me I had a chameleon soul. No moral compass pointing due north. No fixed personality. Just an inner indecisiveness that was as wide and as wavering as the ocean. And if I said I didn't plan for it to turn out this way, I'd be lying. Because I was born to be the other woman. Who belonged to no one, who belonged to everyone, who had nothing, who wanted everything. With a fire for every experience and an obsession for 